Bold and Eric Harris were both smart and came from healthy homes with two parents. Klebold and Eric Harris had both played in sports such as baseball and soccer. Both had fun working with computers. The boys met in middle school and soon found themselves in high school. They found it hard to fit into any of the cliques. As it is too common in high school, the boys started to get picked on by athletes and other students. According to journals, notes, and videos that they left, Klebold had been thinking about committing suicide since 1997. They had both been thinking of committing a school shooting as early as April 1998. They had already been in trouble before. On January 30th, 1998, the two were arrested for trying to break into a van. The two began a juvenile diversion program in April 1998. This program allowed them to remove the event from their records if they got through the program. The entire time, they were planning a large-scale shooting at their high school. The two boys were the kind of people who were angry all the time. They didn't just hate the athletes that made fun of them, or Christians, or blacks. As some of people reported, they basically just hated everyone except for a few people. On the cover of his journal, he wrote, I hate the world. He also wrote that he hated racists, martial arts experts, and people who brag about their cars. Both Klebold and Harris were serious about performing out on the hate they have. As early as spring 1998, they started writing about killing in each other's yearbooks, including an image of a man standing with a gun, encircled by the deceased with a caption saying, The only reason you're still alive is because someone has decided to let you live. The friends were used the internet to discover how to make pipe bombs and other explosives. They packed an arsenal, which had guns, knives, and 99 explosive devices. Columbine High School, 11.10 a.m., Tuesday, April 20th, 1999. Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris arrive at Columbine High School. Dylan and Eric drove separately and parked in their junior and senior parking lot spots. Around 11.14, the two brought in two 20-pound propane bombs with timer set for 11.17 in duffel bags and put them near tables in the cafeteria. No one had noticed them place the bags. They blended in with hundreds of school bags other students brought with him to lunch. The two left the school and went back into the parking lot to wait for the explosion. Nothing happened. If that bomb had exploded, it is believed that it would have killed all 488 students in the cafeteria at the time. The boys waited after the set explosion time, not knowing something had gone wrong. They realized at one point that their original plan had failed. The boys decided to go in anyways. Klebold was armed with a 9mm semi-automatic handgun and a 12-gauge double-barrel solid-off shotgun. Harris had a 9mm carbine rifle and a 12-gauge pump solid-off shotgun. They also had knives and a duffel bag full of bombs. They didn't go in to harm a few people. They were there to hurt as many people as they could without being stopped. At 11.19, two bombs went off that they had set up in a field to use as a distraction for the police. While that went off, they entered the school campus and started firing their first shots at students sitting outside the cafeteria. Almost right away, 17-year-old Rachel Scott was dead and Richard Castaldo was hurt. The boys kept firing. Many students didn't realize what was going on until it was right in front of them. Three friends were leaving the cafeteria when they saw Klebold and Harris. They thought that the guns were paintball guns for the senior prank, so they kept on walking. All three were wounded. Then the two turned to the right to shoot at five friends who were eating lunch in the grass. At least two were hit. One ran to safety. The other was too delimitated to move. As they continued to walk, they kept on throwing small bombs into the area. Klebold then walked down the outside stairs toward the injured three, which include Graves, Kirkland, and Rorbo. At point blade, blank, Klebold shot Rorbo and then Kirkland. Rorbo died instantly. Kirkland eventually survived his pain. Graves somehow crawled back down to the cafeteria, but became weak in the doorway. He played dead, and Klebold stepped over him to look into the cafeteria. The students in the cafeteria looked out the windows when they heard the gunfire and explosions, but they thought it was a senior prank or film production. A teacher and two custodians realized that this was real danger and tried to get all the students out of the cafeteria and to get down on their stomachs. A lot of students went upstairs to the second level, level to get safe, so when Klebold looked into the cafeteria, it seemed empty. 
While Klebold was looking into the cafeteria, Harris kept shooting outside the school. He hit a girl named Anna Marie Hotchhalter as she was trying to escape the horror. When they made up to enter the West Stores, the first policeman showed up on the scene. Him and the two boys fired at each other, but the boys were able to enter the building without being harmed. As they walked down the north hallway, laughing as they shot, most of the students at not at lunch had no idea what was going on. One of the people walking down the halls, out of several others, was shot in the ankle, but was able to make it to safety. Then the two turned around to head towards where they had just entered from. Klebold and Harris spent the next few minutes shooting randomly and throwing bombs in the hallway by the library. They threw two pipe bombs down the stairs into the cafeteria. Fifty-two students and four staff members were hiding in the kitchen of the cafeteria and could hear all of what Klebold and Harris were doing. At 11.29, the boys entered the library. Klebold and Harris went into the library and shouted, Get up! Then they told anyone that is wearing a white cap, jocks, to get up. No one moved. They both started firing, but only one student was injured from flying wood debris. Walking through the library, Cleveland shot and killed Kyle Valesquez, who wasn't on the ground, but instead sitting at a computer desk. The best friends both started firing through the windows at the police and students running away while yelling Yahoo! Klebold turned around and shot at three students hiding on the tables, not killing but injuring all three. Harris turned too and shot Stephen Kernel and Casey Rugsager, just killing Kernel. Sadly, Harris ran into another table and said peekaboo and killed Cassie Bernal. The recoil from the gun broke his nose. Harris now went on a rampage, killing more than ten people. This part is too graphic to describe. Reloading, Harris recognized a colleague of his hiding under the table. The student asked Klebold what he was doing, and Klebold answered, Oh, just killing people. The students wondered if he was going to end up like the others. Klebold told him to leave the library, and the student did. Harris killed several others, including Daniel Mauser and Corey DePooter. The boys started shooting randomly, throwing grenades, taunting students, and throwing chairs. Klebold and Harris left the library after seven and a half minutes, killing ten people, injuring twelve others, and thirty-four students escaped uninjured. Klebold and Harris spent close to eight minutes walking down the halls, inspecting classrooms, and making straight eye contact with some students, but didn't necessarily try to get any of the rooms. At 11.44, the best friends headed downstairs back to the cafeteria. Harris shot one of the duffel bags they had placed in the cafeteria that morning, trying to get that bomb to explode, but gladly it didn't. Klebold took a step back and threw a bomb at that propane bomb. Only the thrown bomb exploded to start a fire and trigger the sprinkler system. They both wandered around throwing bombs where they went and eventually came back to the cafeteria only to see that the sprinkler system put out the fire. At exactly noon, the boys went back upstairs towards the library. Nearly all the uninjured students escaped. Several teachers were still in the cabinets in side rooms along the library. For three minutes, 12.02 to 12.05, Klebold and Harris shot out the library windows toward the emergency vehicles and police that were outside. Between 12.05 and 12.08, Klebold and Harris went to the south side of the library. They counted one, two, three. 